As a realtor, something that comes up fairly often for everyone from first-time home buyers to investors is the question about how purchasing and renovating works, or buying a fixer-upper. Where this can be an appealing option for the right person, this home buying option does have its pros and cons. One great thing about FHA and conventional purchase and renovate or rehab loan products is that the buyer can typically afford more house for less. And although houses that cost between 100 and 250,000 decline in stock year over year, these sales still make up over 40% of the marketplace. So buying an as-is property that needs work or just buying a smaller house that you know you can add on to to get what you need can be a very appealing option for the buyer that's ready and willing to put in the work. With FHA products, you can have a fair to average credit score to get approved and typically won't need to put as much down, which makes this a great option if you have a lower than a 650 credit score or not as much money saved up as you'd like. The lower your score though, the more you will likely need to have saved up for that down payment. But talk to a mortgage broker about this. This type of loan may not be the best for you if you're looking for a long-term living solution because it does typically come along with a higher APR upfront. If you can save up or can borrow from parents or something, you have a little bit more flexibility in other loan products you can get into that will help overall with your monthly budget and the long-term cost of the loan. The most common issue for this type of loan, not getting great estimates. If you've ever done a renovation, you know this, but contractors can come across fees as the job goes along and they may think you should have known these things in advance, but they don't necessarily always put it in a budget. Builders and contractors forget sometimes that some of us don't know anything about building a house or renovating one. Things like consultant fees, inspection fees, permits, the things that the builder might not totally be responsible for are fairly often left out of bids. So just be sure to get an accurate estimate with all the line items accounting for anything that can come up. Well, as much as possible. When I'm budgeting, I typically allow for 10 to 20% markup or budget creep due to unforeseen expenses and circumstances. One last word on this. Be sure that if you're going to buy a smaller house to add square footage onto it, that you're not going to outprice the market wherever you are. This is an easy mistake to make, and you may not think that it's a big deal, but dramatic increases in market prices are what make it harder for buyers to purchase homes. As a seller, a unique house is harder and typically takes longer to sell. A real estate agent can help you to determine what the market will bear and how much house is just enough. If you have any other questions on this matter whatsoever, feel free to reach out to me anytime.